Welcome to Live Action Star Wars. I'm Ralph. I'm James. And today we are discussing Andor Episode 7, The Announcement. Yeah, I, I had to make sure it was Episode 7 because I didn't take any notes last week. So I'm just looking down at my notes now and I've gone from 5 to 7. I'm like, wait, hang on, is there a page missing? But yeah, the oh, announcement. I think it's just announcement. They dropped the the. It's cleaner. Oh, it's just announcement? Announcement, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it says on our video the announcement, and it says that everywhere, including on Twitter, which I'm sure everyone is watching. It's <laughs> like fine. everyone in our chat. It's fine. It's uh, I, th- I think it's an announcement. Um, again, like everything is just a line from the show, which is cool. An announcement comes super early in this one, and I don't know about you, but I I sort of figured that it would be what it was, where it was like, yeah, everything that happened on Aldani was sort of a rebellion announcement it was them going we're here we're coming for your shit yeah but i mean these guys barely have enough money to fight off a, a bear that they just poked <laughs> <laughs> so it's like they're it's this shit is gonna hit the fan and the imperial army is much more uh, equipped to uh, mm. fight these guys off yeah um, lot, like that. lots of talk about the money this week which is really good it's like this very much is a, a mid-season episode and, and yeah that's not a negative I, I really enjoyed it right right there's there's uh i got again i've been trying to hit that thumbnail art because this episode was longer than normal it was it yeah 52 minutes and it just didn't hit and I was like, I, I kept on waiting scramble. for it. I was like, oh, we're getting close. We're uh, getting close. Could it? Could it? Could it? No, um, yeah. no. It might be next week, but I'll try it again. So um, for those of you who are following us on socials and stuff, that's the reason that you sometimes see two different images. So there's the one that yeah. Ralph's made during the week that one or both of us will have posted either to Twitter or Instagram or wherever to try and sort of promote the show, get you guys sort of with an announcement of when you can watch us. And then there's the one that <laughs> goes up... Sometimes an hour, sometimes 20 minutes, sometimes 10 minutes before the episode goes because right. we've both just finished watching it and we're scrambling to do all of these things just before we go live. Uh, so yeah, right. that's the reason. But that one is always from the episode. Yeah, I like to keep them the I like to keep them episode specific and single mm-hmm. character specific. Love it. Uh, this character that I posted on the new one, um, who I'm calling Princess Leia um is is i felt like okay we're gonna get dedra again for sure Mm. we're gonna get dedra so she's gonna get her own character card yeah based on our on our thumbnail art um and uh so i'm like i don't know who this new character is clearly there's a big fanfare to their entrance and Mm -hmm. i'm like she looks a lot like carrie fisher uh in the eyes and the nose Mm. and i'm like what if Tony Gilroy was just like, screw it. Back, backdoor, backdoor sneaking like uh, a layer, yeah. not even cameo, like a, an appearance in there sort of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think it is. Uh, I was trying to figure out is if it was uh, Luthan's partner at the shop and everything. Um, I don't think it was. I, I don't think it was, but the fact that we see Vel in that scene with this character as well. And like, she's, she's cleaned up. She's in her, disguised for being on Coruscant yeah, yeah. as well like everyone on Coruscant is wearing a disguise whether it's right. their their day to day or if it's like a full on disguise um it's so the fact that she cleaned up and looks different to how we've seen her for the last few episodes made me go is wait hang on is that someone that we've seen before is that someone that we know but yeah no i from my single watch through that i've done i i don't think it is uh, i'd need to be I'd, my it's going to be my prediction um we had a you know a different Princess Leia in Obi Wan. Mm-hmm. Do you and, think this is I mean, any? Do you think this is? I suppose five years before this could be five years before a New Hope. She looks a little bit old to be Carrie Fisher five years before a New Hope, though. I think. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe. I don't. Know. Uh, I don't think it, it's it's it is a, a crazy idea. Absolutely. Um, will I replay this footage when it turns out it's her? 100 percent. absolutely i would want nothing else um so that's why that's literally why i, I mean yeah you're you're, you're playing like the 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 real sort of wild swing and abyss with that one if it yeah, is yeah. yeah uh i'm just gonna take the field and say it's another character um 
<laughs> I'm playing it safe. But we do get a, a returning character in this episode that I was quite happy to see because it's a character that makes sense. You don't need to do it. They don't do a big fanfare with it. I don't even... New actor. Know. Yeah, new actor. Um, obviously. obvious. Yeah, obviously. But um, so first time that we've seen him in live action since A New Hope, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Probably, not, unless the, unless there was someone, unless he showed up in Rogue in one? the background of. I don't think he is in Rogue One. Or, in yeah, Rogue no. One? Um, but yeah, we're we're dancing around the fact that it's uh, Colonel Yularen, Wolf Yularen, who yeah. longtime fans will know as the guy in the white suit at the conference table on the Death Star, uh, the head of the ISB. Uh, okay, the so that got, yeah, the the mustache, um, the sort of the very white haired mustache. He, he was a great look. It was always a sort of a standout look in the Death Star. Uh, got fleshed out in the EU and then was in the Clone Wars as uh, Anakin's sort of capital ship commander. Uh, and we quite liked him. He was also like the voiceover guy at the beginning of all the episodes. Um, uh, and like, the, yeah, there you go. That's that's him in A New Hope. Um, does he have so the he same look rank? younger in this? <laughs> uh, yeah, he I have no idea. He, he looks. He looks quite different i think but again it doesn't matter because it's such a nothing years. yeah i mean that's five years later we saw what oh, happened to obi-wan you can see my my cursor you can you can see your whole screen that's crazy <laughs> yeah um so you know make sure that when you're bringing things up it's just the right things on your screen um yeah good. yeah no i liked it because we now get to see that you know partigaz isn't in charge he is still you know, one level down at least from Yolaren. But Yolaren comes in and he's walking around. He's pacing around the ISB conference room, just essentially saying, yeah, this this sucks. This shouldn't have happened. We shouldn't have let this happen. But much in the same way that we, or well, the Emperor used the Clone Wars to grab power, we're using this and we're under essentially like martial law now. We can use this to tighten the fist. Yeah, there was the whole like Patriot Patriot Act thing they were talking about, where yeah. you know, you know, we're kind of gonna be sort of wishy washy with the rules and just kind of do now. Anyone, any system that is seen to harbor any rebellion or anything has to pay us uh, a tax, and it's like they are they are they're tightening the net, they're they're closing the fist, and it's one of those things where it's like, ah, oh, God, everything that the rebellion's done in this show so far, I have found, and is there like a it's good. These things need to happen, but is it? It's one of those. In the moment, it's more harm than good that it's causing. Yeah. It's like, in the long run, absolutely, it all needs to happen. It is all laying the groundwork. These small pockets of rebellion do need to rise up, but for those people, the immediate backlash is going to be worse than they had it before. Right, and I like the repercussions and how it's like with Mon Mothma going into Luthens and just now like everything is so heightened mm. uh, that I'm like not trusting the assistant. I'm not trusting the, the banker guy she's talking to at the dinner party. I'm not trusting, like I'm really afraid. And the fact that she said that only three people know about this, yeah. like that's it. It's just her Luthen it's... and the, and, um, the assistant and uh, the uh, his, assistant. his name we should have but i can't think of it mm, um I... yeah like that's that is the rebellion at the moment which is wild we are getting a, a a new story for the very origins of the what becomes the rebel alliance like it right. it very much sounds like luthan is he's not just a, a player he is the player he's the one really really putting this all together it seems uh, he's 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 keeping an eye and an ear out for people that share a similar sentiment, but he's the one going around making the connections, building the network. As they say, like the network is there, it's in place. So you've got to think that I'm maybe a... he went to um, the like not necessarily Hera directly, but uh, who Hera was answer answering to. Does the Ahsoka is she involved with him in some way? Like the yeah. sort of all of this sort of stuff like we don't need to see any of that i don't think but we're getting that impression that he's the he's the focal point um so he's the connection between all of these dots yeah 
uh it's 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 funny how we know how this shit ends up <laughs> we know how luke skywalker dies in 10 movies or in nine movies yeah you know whatever um but it's still exciting to see this and we know all about the you know they haven't even talked about the death star in this nice. which was the whole thing it's, with rogue yeah. one it's like not even mentioned and I'm it shouldn't still be. i don't want it to just about all this stuff yeah you know it's if if anything it would be a case of we get uh a tarkin or a, someone else at, a, at one of these dinner parties and it's a background mention of the the project is moving along uh, a good pace or yeah. we've stalled at this this point or whatever like we've we've had to move it from geonosis and like just some background offhand reference but i don't i don't need it i don't want yeah. it i don't like it's, I, it's that should be a secret crazy project. it's crazy that this is a prequel that we know everything about yeah, we know the end but, points but, of, we, but we're like it. but it's still able to keep tension I, it's, it's not i don't know it, how it's keeping tension it's as you were saying, like you're not trusting this person, that person. It's that goes back to that thing that Gilroy was saying before the show came out about it being a, a paranoid show. It's every yeah. that that paranoia is that's intended. That is what they want you to be feeling like, and yeah. it's what the characters are thinking and feeling. Mod Mothma is this is a childhood friend of hers. Uh, the guy's name is uh, Tay Colmer. Um who's a banker on Chandrilla, her home world, childhood friend, one of her closest confidants. And she's been mulling it over whether or not she can trust him with this stuff. And it's not until yeah. he basically starts saying it unprompted that she's like, okay, cool. Basically you said the secret phrase and now I can bring you in. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy to me. It's just crazy to me mm. because I know everything works out. Yeah. Yeah. But I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be this tense. Um, we should say hi to some say, people. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's say hi. Uh, so StreamYard, as always, we love you. Thank you. Uh, make your desktop thing customizable so that it's easier for us. Uh, Sarah Kelly's here. Hi, Sarah. She's Morning, in New York. Stevie. Oh, yeah. Sarah is in New York, isn't she? Um, looks like mm. she's having a lovely time. Uh, Scott D's here. And yeah, I I do too. I want we'll to have to talk about that. that. Well, we'll get to that, Scott, because uh, yeah, I I've got some stuff about that and that scene as well. Uh, and Tristan's here as well. Uh, who I I didn't at the time <laughs> agree uh, that Ian McDermott was going to be in this show, but I it wouldn't surprise me. It really wouldn't surprise me. I think I feel like I feel like with sort of deep fake technology and. The and fact that it could be hologram and filters. Yeah. The fact that they the the hologram from Obi Wan Kenobi with Ian McDermott, where he was in there for just like a little bit, um, uh, could be CG since you're going to be putting an effect on over it. Maybe yeah. it wasn't makeup, but I kind of still feel the I same. We, like I think we saw him in the in the some of the background uh, or behind the scenes shots. I think we saw him basically in London in a studio when everything else was shot in LA or wherever. Uh, I think they just okay. had him come in for a day or two. Um, but or yeah, he was like, already here. Or he was happened to be over, but it looked like they were shooting it in a different location, just on a, a blue screen or something. Um, okay. But yeah, no, it's the sort of thing that if you've got him in, just write a bunch of generic, essentially like kind of generic dialogue, get him to deliver a, a I, bunch of these little short speeches. No, I think he was here shooting this show interesting and then they're like hey obi-wan series needs these these like five lines okay come over here say these lines you're talking to vader and action okay send that off to send that off to mandalorian or obi-wan and you're good to go mm. um but yeah it is if if he was in makeup mm. for for uh for obi-wan like you're going to spend all that time in yeah. makeup when it's a hologram and you could do anything digitally. Yeah. I mean, even it's, it's star tours has a princess Leia hologram in it <laughs> okay. and it's a CG Leia. Like yeah. it looks pretty good. Cause mm. once you start adding the like blue and all the scan lines, you can stuff, hide so much. I mean, it's, know. it's one of the best things that George ever did was those holograms and yeah. the way that they did them. You can hide so much with them. Um, yeah um speaking of which this is the first time we've seen a television 
We've seen yeah, monitors. We've we've heard about the HoloNet and news being on the HoloNet. We've seen like printed versions of that on screens before, but this was the first time that we got like is HoloNet it, see... HoloNet news. Yeah, is that do we see on Solo? In Solo, when he's getting recruited, he's looking up at a recruitment video on a mm, monitor. Yeah, but there might be some like a full on terminal as well, like possibly. But this is like a full on TV, like tube TV, nineteen seventy six. Yeah, like CRT. The, so the, the rounded off, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and it's like built into the wall. They're watching it, it at it breakfast. Like a big, it's it was yeah. like a big reveal because he, you can hear it, and you yeah. see him looking at it. I'm like, what is it going to look like? Yeah, is it is, is it just going to be a tablet a or what? Yeah, like yeah, what is it going to and it look like a TV in a wall? Like it's like their breakfast TV. Yeah, it's it's in the breakfast. I love look. that it was so old looking. It was good. It was very good. And yeah, that's more when uh, Cyril's getting berated by his mum yet again for wearing a a brown suit. And With it's a pretty ugly. It's a pretty ugly suit. But yeah, again, we know that this guy likes to customize his clothing he's had it tailored he's had the collar bought up and she calls him on it she's she she sort of says it's like i said you do all of this to hide you're hiding your insecurities yeah and yeah. she nailed and it and what's like, great brutal, is it then but she's not wrong but then when it moves on to dedra it's the shot the first shot of her getting ready and it's a shot of her collar yeah so like it's like it's good film uh, language it's just good like yeah. it's shorthand it's, yeah, exactly. You don't need another character. You don't need <laughs> Petrogaz telling Deidre that because we've had it. As, it's just like mm. as slow as the show is, as far as the pacing goes, it's definitely long conversations, mm. not a lot of quick cutting. I don't think there's any action in this. They cut away in the flashback just before Andor was going to take out the the stormtroopers or the clone troopers, um, and but it's still like even though it's that kind of like slow burn a lot of people are saying slow burn lately um um it is funny that there's still room for this sort of shorthand yeah like it's, like it's she's just... talking that shows his insecurity then the very next scene you show her call like a close-up of her collar which is very similar we've been making shows, comparisons oh, about the two of those two like for for weeks now and yeah that it just gets heightened every time they're both in the yeah. system they're both <clears throat> essentially working towards the same goals but one's been bought low and the other one's on the rise yeah and so thinking like for me um a serial teetering between who's he gonna join is he gonna oh. be against the empire because they made him look like an idiot or is he gonna is he gonna be on the rebellion how are they which one is what side is he gonna be on the rebellion or the empire and um with this he puts him right in square in the middle of like ISB and um pretty sure he's going to be looking for stuff and his paths are going to cross with Dedra because she pretty much has free reign to like like Pull go into records. any any yeah. record she wants and if he starts pulling like something I'm assuming he's in Ferrix like we got like that last shot where it's just like no dialogue just him in this cubicle just staring Wide blankly shot, yeah. then hard then just like hard cut um that's like you know sort of like hey listen this is something you need mm -hmm. ingrained in your mind is what he's doing here so you do the hard cut the black and the actual visual gets stuck in your like cornea yeah. and shit like yeah, it's yeah, yeah, like it's, when it's you shut right, your yeah. eyes you can still see something it's, um yeah. so it's like super Talk important orange, what he's doing yeah yeah, yeah. room 23 um, so like 100 percent they're they're crossing paths um uh both no doubt about it. like he's barracks. he's been he's been assigned to like fuel cleanliness or something like just busy work essentially but we know that he's going to be working on other things he's he said it like he said it essentially yeah. in his job interview he's like i'm going to be working to clear my name like that's that's his goal is to get himself back in a position of power he's not happy with where he is he's there because he has to be but he's he's already said this and the boss who's been told by uh uncle harlow to give give my nephew a job but he's right. he's like all right well we'll well, I'll alter this and we'll do that because at the moment we shouldn't be hiring you because you're a screw-up but 
yeah, he's, I don't know, it's a case of they. he's been honest with them in the fact that he doesn't really want to be there, but what can you do? Dedra's going to pull him out. Yeah, she'll, I think he'll, for sure. Yeah, definitely. It'll be one of those, oh, hang on, this guy, he's already here on Coruscant. We've essentially already got him close by. She'll go to him. She'll start talking to him to try and get some more information and then pull him out and realize that he's useful. Yeah. Uh, I could still see a, a turn from him at some point down the line. I could still see him being essentially stepped on a few more times and then... Yeah, I because th- he's been shit on by everybody. Mm. Everybody. Um, I think, so he, I I feel think like he could take just... more, but he's yeah, I, potentially, potentially. But if he turns and gets sort of influenced by someone in the rebellion, mm. I want to see that drive and determination go against the imperials yeah i feel like his drive and determination is uh is sort of aimless right now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we all know he has potential to be like a bigger deal and i mean i always root for the good guys so i'm like kind of like come on dude just just what? be this hardcore for the good guys i don't know he's a tough one to root for at the moment but i yeah. am willing i'm willing to change my tune on him if if he can does happen to come around but that's the thing too is like with star wars like we said oh like reva's gonna turn good and we know oh you know it's it's everywhere like we knew by the end of episode seven uh force awakens Mm. we're like oh kylo ren's gonna turn good there's something in him by the by the end yeah like that's what Star Wars does that all over the place. It's like, a redemption. Oh, it's always the redemption. Yeah, yeah, story. the heart of gold. Yeah. Yeah. Um classic so, Star Wars redemption. Like, yeah. Han Solo. Yeah. Uh but it's like for this guy, it feels different. Because I'm like, we expect him. I don't know what we expect from him. Yeah. At the moment, he doesn't, very little. Because he seems like a, a dick. I guess it's but... chalked up to George Lucas was like. Here are the bad guys. Here are the good guys. Yeah. There might be some guys in the middle. Um, but this show is like... Eh. And I love it. I love it. And the, fact that, the fact that Tony Gilroy I... isn't like so beholden to playing with his toys and making yeah. you feel like you're nine again, it makes me go, maybe there won't be a redemption. Maybe there is no redemption for this guy. Maybe he's a hardliner. Maybe anything getting stepped on will just harden him to his cause. Um, which is a different sort of character than we normally get in Star Wars. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if like um, of another character that I absolutely hate but feel bad for at the same time as Cyril. Like he's so hateable, mm. mm-hmm. but I feel bad for him. But he is it's an asshole. It's a testament to the writing and the performance. I think there, like it's yeah. it's you do like. They've done a really good job I, because at the end of episode I three, just, I didn't give a shit about him. Like I, in a, I want this guy to just get beaten down. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like but you when put, he was talking to the with middle manager, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. Like dealing with like the asshole mom, um, you're like, oh boy, this guy's grown up like real shitty. But um, but seeing him talk to the uh, middle management imperial dude with the tie. Yeah. Um, oh, that guy with the. Yeah, I, I've my note. What was it? I, I. Yeah, he's got a space cardigan on. Like he's. Yeah. It looks like a cardigan, but like he's got yeah that square tie. Like yeah. Yeah. It's great. What a but great. Just watching costume. him like, like talk to him. Like this is the first person to be like, oh okay, I see. You're like been shit on your whole life here. This might help you out. Like it's a first like positive influence on this guy. Everyone's told him no up until this point. Yeah. And now someone's telling him, yeah, I, that sounds good. I can take care of that. You'll uh, be. Tristan, Tristan brings up the point here that Cyril hasn't actually done anything wrong. He's technically the good guy. I'd argue that. I'd, his, I'd, his... I'd say he was a cop. Uh, he was a cop his... for a really corrupt regime. Um, don't think he's a good guy. But I mean, in his. In his rules, in his rule set of like playing by the rules of what is right. like the authority at the time, then yeah, no, he hasn't done, he hasn't broken any of those rules. Right. Right. Apart from maybe customizing his uniform. 
but you know. But he's a little. He's a. He's a little intense in the brain. Yeah, he's definitely. Yeah, he's he's. We've all seen videos. We've all had experiences. We all know about you know those types of cops, and he is one hundred percent one of those. Um, yeah. yeah, but again, that's just what the show is telling us. Like we, like this show, it's it's. I'm gonna say it. The show is very woke. Like if <laughs> if you yeah. if you're smart enough, if you're smart enough to to understand what's going on, um, but I'm not hearing it. And I think the reason I'm not hearing it is because the main character, quote unquote, yeah, isn't isn't uh, like a female. Like, oh, here's the next. Like, that's all I hear on the internet is they people shitting on Disney and Lucasfilm because they're woke by putting like by female putting leads. yeah female leads. But yeah. the thing is, like, Andor's the name on the marquee, but he's barely part of this story i mean this um, episode he's he's the least seen character i think of the like but of the you lead. can see like the uh the female characters uh bix mon mothma uh marva yep um yep. uh vel they're vel, uh, vel princess, uh, leia. Sensa, <laughs> princess leia uh, yeah, they're it's, all it's... dealing with they're all de- dealing with bullshit, and at the same time, they're they're using they're using sort of modern day bullshit, mm. but tucking it away real nice. It's real subtle. It's not that have we talked about have we talked about Falcon and Winter Soldier? Where did I talk about that? It might have no. been on another show. Yeah, I think it was different. Where year. I'm just like Falcon and Winter Soldier. I love that show. I'm like okay. It's a little ham-handed. It's a little heavy-handed. A little what a ham fist. I don't know. It was a little like it was a little on the nose. It was, but it was good though because mm-hmm. I'm like, great. This is taking the piss out of like uh, the the fucking like Proud Boys and shit because of the because of Wyatt Russell, all that shit. Yeah. It was, I'm like, okay, it's it's it's. It, I know it because I pay attention to shit, and but no one's really talking about it. And then the last episode. Sam does this big old speech saying everything that I knew that they were so subtly sprinkling yeah. in. And the thing I like about this is you watch a show like She-Hulk, which is amazing. I love She-Hulk beginning to end. I thought it was great. And that like comes at you like a ton of bricks. It's like, here's all the bullshit that women have to deal with from men and society is dishing on. Here's all the bullshit in your face online and everything. Yeah. It's all yeah. breaking the fourth wall and mm. fucking you hitting you over the head with it. And of yeah. course the internet goes nuts. This show is doing all the same stuff, but I don't know if people are noticing it as much. Like, do they I, know what the patriarch is? Do they know? Uh, yeah. Like, like that probably not. It was, that was do like that was 20 years stuff? ago. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's like it's like I'm I'm like what they're doing with this. I'm like, this is like the most woke Star Wars yeah. show ever, and nobody's saying anything. <laughs> we're sneaking um, it guys. through, guys. We're, we're we're sneaking it through. Let them have it. What I like, I'm gonna I'll posit a theory. Are all the gross people on the internet getting too distracted by She Hulk and Rings of Power to like we're letting this one, we're letting a Star Wars slide I don't through. Know. Like, cause, cause know. they're out there. Though. They're definitely still because out they, there. Because but... was wasn't there some sort of discourse where people getting mad that Obi Wan, the Obi Wan series, was getting too political? Oh, probably. Like, like, I, get... I feel like people say Star Wars is getting political all the time, and then it's like, a, uh, guys, it's a rebellion against an empire. Like that's yeah. pretty political. Where it has been like, since the jump. Seventy seven. They're talking about regional governors and shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. 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 So, um, <laughs> so, so the show, like, again, like, I know people who aren't fans of Star Wars just because, like, noise and stuff. Like, yeah. uh, the Disney era is kind of, like, whatever you want to say about the Disney. I have friends who aren't into that stuff. Mm-hmm. All my friends seem to love Andor. And we're not Everything really that I've seen, everything that much. I've seen has been, <laughs> we're yeah, no. like, We're just like... I love it. Like I watched the episode to do the podcast, and after the yeah. podcast, I don't really want to talk like about a, it. Like, yeah, no I, notes. But... I want it to just exist. I don't want to, again. I don't want to poke a bear. I just want it to be like this thing. Like, like we're all just like, are they really like? I can't know. Like, we it. got through two main story arcs. 
that both stuck their landing. We have two more to go. And it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about Princess Leia. I don't want Princess Leia on the show. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm like, like, are they Dang. sneaking stuff in here? And just, are they going to make this show like this the whole time? Like our it's big like, action sequence it, it, last it, week was a shootout and a, a ship taking off. Like, is that like the high level we're getting? And I'm so excited about this show that I just, I'm afraid to jinx anything. Yeah. I just want it to and be. And you don't. And and like I want this going forward as well. Like so, I don't want them to see anything online and go, okay, right. Well, what can we course correct for season two? It's like, no, 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 no. Just keep going. You're great. You're perfect. Leave you alone. You do this. More of this, please. Like that's that's what I want. So yeah, and it's. I think there's been some articles out this week um, of like analytics and stuff like that. And it's a streaming show, so you can only ever really take it with a grain of salt. But like the the. The, the vibe is that this is getting a lot less viewers than Obi Wan, Book of Boba Fett, or anything. Good, good. But that's it. It's like I don't care. I don't think Disney are, are hurting for money. I don't think they're out the here like me. going. Yeah, they're they're not going to go and cancel it. Like they're done. They're in. They're locked. Like season two is getting produced, and we know that that's it, and it's out. Like yeah. great, cool. So people will find it. There's a lot of other shit on at the moment. There's well, a lot of okay. there's a lot to watch. <laughs> people will watch it. But if it if the lower numbers of what are keeping the conversation civil and good and yes. positive then yes awesome take those this lower is, viewings i feel like this is the dark times all over again and i'm back being like the only star wars fan i know yeah that can quietly talk about star wars positively with a friend who's in the know and yeah. that's what it feels like i just want to say uh adam frazier brings up the little old lady aliens at the beach um Together. this is another thing we get our introduction to the K2 units, uh, yeah. droids. And this was like, fuck. this was where I was like, shit, we're getting into Rogue One territory. Here's your big cameo of the week. And I'm like, I, I was like, please, I'm, yeah. I'm willing to go on this ride where Cassian went to Space Atlantic City or Space Miami or whatever. It so was I'm, so bizarre. It was bizarre. No, and I'm like, yeah. I love it. It's bizarre. Awesome. And it's a hard cut. So you're like, thrown off you're like what is this music yeah. i'm listening to while watching these like blue flamingos um and i'm just like i'm like oh my god what is i'm like okay i'm along for this ride i trust tony gilroy and company and i'm like this is weird and then when you see cassian in the shower you're like this is where he, this is where he <laughs> thinks he wants to go yes this is and like he's he's like he's he's gone he's got he's met a girl he's Looks like he's doing some drugs. Yeah, like he's just gone to the beach. So I, I'm pretty sure I know where this was shot. Like the bit where he's walking along the beach and the shore troopers are okay. chasing those guys. Because they shot a lot of, well, they shot almost all of the show in the UK. Um, right. They were down in Dorset, uh, uh, Whipsnail Quarry or something, uh, which we haven't seen yet, but we saw it in trailers. Uh, that's going to be where it looks like where Saw and his partisans are. Uh, down there, there's a couple of beaches that... I was watching the show and I was like, I recognize like that bit of wall, like the curvature, like the seawall and those seatings and stuff. Mm. It's, it's one of like two or three places, but I'm pretty sure I've been there like recently. And yeah, describing it as like space AC or space long beach. I saw uh, like some people mm. sort of saying, it's like kind of, yeah, it's about, that's about right. Uh, this looks nicer. It looks more resorty, but it's definitely like, beach seaside town surfer bums like it's yeah it's where people are just going to hang out and forget about it so yeah all of this happening here is great but as you said that that, that the shot where we're introduced to it and the planet is um i wrote it down uh niamos or niamos um just that that long sweeping shot over the birds up to the beach and it's it, it feels it, like i mean i was joking I, when i was like in the show about like we're gonna get a shopping montage or anything i was like this is is this like an anime beach episode like or something it's just like it's what it feels like it is was that... it was an establishing shot from fast and furious yeah 100 percent. the music the music and the birds and the dance the, music, the, the, like the, dance the, music the, in star wars the helicopter shot going along the beach 100 fast and furious yeah um and uh yeah, like you could just I'm, imagine ludicrous is on that beach somewhere like and and you're just watching in this and it's such a d 
different place. Again, it doesn't look like Star Wars, but yeah. it is Star Wars. Like there's enough aliens and enough weirdness to be Star Wars. And I'm like, yes, expand what the galaxy can look like. It doesn't all have to be every planet doesn't have a exactly. have to have a moisture evaporator. Exactly. I don't think we've seen a moisture evaporator on this show. I don't think we have. And know. that's something you see in every single other it's it's it's, it's star wars iconography it's like it is it's always there like it comes up in so many questions of like oh if you had to live on any planet in the star wars galaxy like where would you go and like in recent years a lot of people have said scarif because it's beautiful and it looks lovely there um mm. uh, but i'm like at the moment like neomos is winning it for me because that place looks chill yeah. like i like, mean with the exception of the imperial occupation but but we know why that seems to be happening. It's like this this sort of thing seems to be building. It's on the rise. Um, as Marva says, it's like, it doesn't matter where you go. That's happening now. Like, it's it's happening everywhere. Uh, Adam Fraser with comment of the week. <laughs> 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 Two Monty Mothma is excellent. Um, let's, let's see it. Um, yeah, Han Solo versus Don Toretto in a speeder race. Um, Dom can't lose. It's in Vin, Dies <laughs> Vin Diesel's contract. He can't lose. Yeah, that's it. Or he has to take an equal <laughs> or less amount of punches. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, we don't great. need it. I love um, those movies. Those, yeah, they're, they're so dumb. Um, but in good ways. Uh, yeah, the, like the, the best way shot, possible. The establishing shot of the, the KX uh, series, the security droid, as it's walking up the beach, it's that like. Oh, it's familiar. We recognize it. If you've only seen Rogue One, not played any of the games and don't know about these droids, you might think, oh, is this going to be the introduction of K2? I see it and go, oh, shit, these things are bad news. Like, these are, yeah. these are like, they're tough droids. And, and Tony Gilroy doing the right thing and the smart thing is like, we all love K2SO. He's so great. And we did see the other droids in Rogue One. But, like, let's set these up as real hardcore droids yeah. so that by the time you meet k2 later you see like that arc of what he used what to it be. took yeah exactly what it what he was before like the reprogramming and the implementation of b2 because i'm calling it um <laughs> i was just gonna bring this up uh this uh the shore troopers love them like they're they're called short troopers because they're in Rogue One, yeah. and they were on the shore, and that's what they were called, like sand troopers or snow troopers, whatever. It's short troopers, but I love that they just stuck to this design because they're by a shore, so we have to use that design. <laughs> yep, yeah. like it doesn't, it, it, it makes doesn't less matter. sense on it, here than it does on Scarif. It but makes it's hilarious. It makes you think, like based on all of that, that like why didn't they send? A different type of trooper to Tatooine. Like it's it's silly. It sells action figures. I like it, but I just really like the design. I really like the shore trooper design. Always have. Um, it's got echoes of the scout trooper for me, uh, and that's always been my favorite mm -hmm. variant. So, um, yeah, it's it's cool design. That guy was an absolute dick. He's oh, the yeah. he's that guy who's pulling over skateboarders and going, "What are you doing? Why are you causing this trouble?" and Cassian he's is the one planting planting drugs on a yeah on a he's prospect. doing all of that it's just like and Cassian just is absolutely his crime is looking over his shoulder yeah. um and he gets six years sentence for that which is wild again yeah again rip from the uh, headlines but we know he's not going to do it because six years takes us past a new hope but. Like, yeah, and with the introduction of the K droid, the what the are they? A KX, yeah. KX series security droid. Yeah. Um, does he get a hold of one in the prison? I don't think. Are we? Is it too soon for K two? He's got to get out. Who? How does he yeah. get out? Is it Val? Luton's got to hear Luthen. about this. Lu oh, no, it could be Val. Yeah, because again, going back to that scene with uh, not Princess Leia, Val is now her new mission is to take out and kill cassian essentially like he's a loose end with cassian being sort of on the books now as this other character yeah 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 so um, uh adam brought up the point that uh the terrifying terminator style shot that is exactly where my mind went was the the kx yeah. walking up the beach was exactly a terminator shot uh yeah carry on yeah sorry um but 
once he's in he's in the imperial database as keith or whatever they said his name was keith i think it's k-w-e-f <laughs> yeah keith <laughs> keith, <laughs> Did keith you watch righteous gemstones There's i don't a character know named keith okay. There's a character named keith and he's amazing <laughs> um, watch that show uh if you get a chance it's very very good i've got i've got um, such a list it's 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 the most cringe like, okay danny mcbride show okay um but um i was gonna say now that he's sort of his he's keith in the database but his face is in there i'm assuming yeah all these people who are looking for him are going to converge onto this prison wherever he is right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like like what's his nuts cyril's gonna find him vel's gonna know ba- about it Battle of the beach you know about it <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't know. I I don't know. I, I I mean, this episode does feel like the the first of the the f- other ones, but they've again this week they've sort of said like episode seven is its own so, thing. They're like they're they're changing up the formatting a little bit, so it's not but, a three but three I, three. But but the thing is, so we've gotten we've gotten the setup, we've gotten the heist, and now what if this is a is a, a breakout, a prison breakout? Yeah, exactly. Spoiler. It's like. It does like still just keep with messing that. with genres using the same character. But if this Love whole it. thing, if the next three episodes are him in this prison yard, you could still cut away to Mon Mothma and these guys. But with Cyril, Cyril set up in the Imperial Network, Dedra looking in the Imperial Network, mm-hmm. and the show called Andor, I have yeah. a feeling we're going to get some Andor. Start getting interesting. So maybe Dedra goes to. Because the thumbnail artwork that I've used for Dedra is going to happen where yep. she ends up on Ferrix. She's looking for him. She With doesn't find troopers. him. Yeah. Um, I, Cyril's going to end up finding him. Someone's going to find him. Maybe they bring him to Corazon mm, as their prisoner to interrogate him about the the Imperial stuff he's been yeah. stealing. And, and, and Yeah, uh, he's not broken out. Then, he's just transferred. Yeah. And then, I mean, there, there you are. They're all on Corazon, Luthen. Val, Princess Leia, <laughs> not really, um, and and the bad guys. So it's I don't know, but that's the thing. What's great about this show is there's the things we're speculating on. That's it. I love are it. Things that are unknown. It's not oh, this is going to lead to yeah the battle of blank, or this is going to lead into because that's all we did with Obi Wan. Yeah, we're like we know the gaps. They're here to fill the gaps. They're building up to um, this next fight. They're doing the game. Rogue One was yeah. was an ex- sub, was kind of an extent of that. Was yeah. we saw them build the Death Star. We've seen them destroy the Death Star. Here's the story between that. Like yeah, we know the they're filling gaps. Yeah. With this, it's not. It's leading to Rogue One, which is just a guy named Cassian who shoots a dude in cold blood in an alley. And so like, what's great about the show is I don't know. I don't know what's going to yeah, happen. Is yeah. it going to be all about his, Are the next one's going to be about him in an Imperial prison breaking rocks? It's, I what mean, is it going to be? I feel like and maybe we'll get, we'll get some of it, maybe half an episode, maybe a whole episode of him. Yeah. On, on a prison, either here or on a different planet, wherever he's transferred to. Um, it's, and then I think I think you've nailed it. Like, I love as you said. Like, we 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 speculate. That's like everyone speculates when they're talking about things. But like, it's that I don't know, and I love that I don't know, and I've got no expectations. It's just like like wild guesses. Um, and the thing is, like, I you think... read the books, so you know more about this timeline than I do. They... But the fact that you don't know what's going to happen is awesome too, because like yeah. this is what I think Star Wars fans want. They don't want to predict that Kylo Ren's going to become good. He ended up becoming good, and it's like yes, we oh, all knew it was going to yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's surprising. This whole show. Someone mentioned it before. Oh man, hold on, I'm going to find it. While um, while you're finding that, um, ah, um, oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Less hype. I'm not, I'm not going to pronounce the first name. Pedro says that um, he wasn't hyped for this after Book of Boba Fett and Kenobi uh, was a disappointment. He said he glad, or they said they glad they watched this. And I'm on in the same boat. Like I was like, I'm not really into Andor because I know how he dies. Mm. I don't I know, know why. I always, had, I always had but, a good feeling about this one. Like back from when those first announcements were made, I was like, that's cool. That's interesting. That's different. Um, 
it was one of those shows that honestly when it was first announced i was like if they're going to cancel anything that'd be the one they don't bother making because because of that because who's who's excited for this and there was something about that that actually got me more excited for it i i don't know i i really enjoyed it um we were we talked about a few things yeah i can imagine it being a case of he's transferred by deidre uh back to carson or to somewhere else and that's where the escape or breakout happens uh that's how he gets back in with luthan or something like that and then it's a case of you got two options here we either kill you because you're a loose end or you're you join us um and you're in uh what's okay so again again this is speculation but do they let him have a book if, in prison do they let him have a book in prison and is that where he, he starts might be reading? Able to keep it is that where he, he starts keep it. is that where he Good starts call. reading but also if you introduce this prison and these k2 droids or the kx droids are uh are sort of there being the guy like being you know muscle at this mm. prison mm. it fills in a gap of how Cassian was able to get to Jyn Erso by using K2SO in her prison. Yeah. So it's like it the pieces. We, make I mean, we've, sense. we've already it's not heard. just a cameo. It's not yeah. just a K2SO cameo. It serves the story. And Wobani was talked about in the first episode, and that's where Jin is, like when they break her out. She's on Wobani. So maybe I don't know. Did Cassian serve some time on Wobani? Maybe like is he sent there? Yeah. Um, that seems like an Imperial detention facility um yeah we've got to talk about the mon mothma stuff again before we get out of yeah. here because mon mothma no slime more f- for me i don't think i don't think we're gonna get slime more unfortunately um I th- um, my hopes of an actual slime more yeah. appearance are pretty dashed but it's fine because yeah. we don't need it because we're getting mentions of emperor palpatine we're getting mentions of the grand vizier which is uh massa um, um like he's essentially or like mandel have- or Mantel's being mentioned, like all of these yeah. things. And I was, so uh, Liz was in a meeting while I was watching this episode. So I had headphones on watching it. And so I had it cranked up quite high. So I was picking up really like tiny background things. And I I speculated and uh, wondered if the person that she was meeting at this party was going to be uh, uh, Finnis Valorum. Uh, wasn't I never really thought in the same way that your Leia theory is like I never thought it actually would be, but I was yeah. like, eh, it'd be interesting. Um, when they're at that party, when they're talking, background conversation, it's a lot of chitter chatter, chitter chatter. But the name Valorum is dropped. So, like someone at that party is talking about Valorum. I heard the word Valorum for sure. <laughs> um, and it's a case of it's good background texture it doesn't mean anything it doesn't yeah. need to mean anything but they're at a party uh, a politician's house talking about politics and things like that the f- like that would be like me bringing up i don't know like uh at former prime ministers and things like that or you talking about trump or whoever else like at a party like it just yeah. these things come up so it's just good background texture but i thought it was quite funny that while this guy is on screen not being Finis Valorum, we're hearing his name in the background, but it's so subtle, so so background that I I doubt if you could even hear it if you're watching it on a regular sort of TV or speakers. Yeah. Um, and that's she's... that's what the extent of the Easter eggs I enjoy. That's I great. Don't... Yep. Yeah, um, yeah. like the the Gungan shield was one that I noticed in uh, the shop this week. Um, I noticed uh, 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 those um, temple Jedi temple guard helmet. Maybe. Yeah, I saw that one. Yeah. I think um I don't again, know if it actually it's... was that but it, it i think was it was it, i think it was it looked yeah. it looked close enough um but again yeah, we have like a new this... director and the director is definitely framing shots a little bit differently mm-hmm. and um so with the stuff with Luthen, it, Luthen, it wasn't as tied up on him yeah he left the background wide open and i'm like all right i'm gonna start looking in the background here <laughs> i shouldn't i don't i don't like doing that yeah uh, especially with this show because i don't it's the the whole thing we're like there was a, 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 a Twi'lek, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a Twi'lek Calakori in the background. Like that's that's great. I love that that shop yeah. is there, and we we keep on mm-hmm. seeing it because all the people that love Easter eggs and they want to make videos about Easter eggs and things like that, cool, go nuts. It's all there for you. Everything in that shop, yeah. uh, like Plo Koon's eyes are there, and all that sort of shit. It's oh, cool. Really? It's great. Yeah. Um, but it's <laughs> it's so it's so nothing. It's so like it's not relevant. It's not important. 
Um, mm-hmm. The things that are important are the things that are mentioned or handed over. So like the message on the coin or the message on the things, the coins. Um, mm-hmm. I saw, I think it was Molly Damon tweeted the symbolism of him trying to give Mon Mothma a weapon as that first gift and yeah. her choosing something else. And that that goes back to what their conversation was in this one, where it's like, you knew what you were getting into. Mm-hmm. You can't, essentially, you can't sharpen a sword and then not expect to slice someone with yeah. it. Like, we are building towards this thing. You're You're hesitant because you're a peaceful person at heart, Mon Mothma, but this is a rebellion. There is going to be some blood. Like it's going to happen and it has to happen. Um, It's he, at the moment he feels like a really good middle ground between Saul's extremism and Mon Mothma's pacifism. And it's at the moment, he's the one who's like, when we need to, we will do this when we, when we need to, when it is dictated, but otherwise, we can we can play the angles we can we can try and get a banker on our side great cool that'd be helpful Mm -hmm. but if we can't get a banker on our side we need a redundancy and that redundancy is robbing an imperial garrison and like the quarterly payroll of an entire star system it's like Mm -hmm. they are working towards the same ends but through different means and it's fascinating yeah he's kind of diving in head first and she's yeah he's he's a surgeon Mm. Yeah, mm, that's a great mm-hmm. way of putting it. Mm-hmm. Um, um, we got we got some Ferrex. We got some flashbacks on Ferrex. We know for uh, sure what happens with um, Clem. Original our first, Clem. Our first live action clone troopers, right? I mean, have we seen clone trooper armor in real life? Yeah, because it was all digital, wasn't it? In yeah. well, at least that one was all digital. Um, yeah. I, I'm assuming so. Yeah, I don't know, maybe unless there was something they... in the flashbacks of Mandalorian season one. Uh, Obi Wan. They built some for. Um, That's right. Or that one, that one. They built them for this. Wait, yeah. Because wasn't yeah, yeah, it yeah. shot over there? Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, but yeah. Um, but it's it's all very cool and it looks good. They're all obviously in there, all white now at this point. Um, it's like stormtrooper looking. Um, but yeah, we see that poor Clem and or like goes out because he's trying to keep the peace. He's not trying to yeah. incite rebellion. He was trying to keep the peace and it looks like they strung him up for it because he was the one stood in the street at the time, which, you know, yeah. if you're the other people on Ferex who were throwing stones, have a little bit of backbone. Don't leave this guy high and dry. Like if you're yeah. gonna if you're gonna throw, was... Exactly, if you're gonna throw stones, throw some stones. Like let's actually yeah. just do it. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. yeah. Uh yeah, Grogu saw some uh clones as well. I think nice. they they've they've obviously built a bunch of armor at this point and they can reuse it whenever needed, <laughs> yeah. which makes sense. Um, really quick before we wrap here, uh, I got a note that just says I don't like him because he's the head or he's a middle management in uh, the ISB. But Partagaz is a good manager. Yeah. Like he's he's actually that scene was great. He's actually manages that meeting very well. He wants everyone to give their input. When the guy is disappointing him, he sort of. He works that guy into saying your guidance would be necessary. And then he's like, cool, right. I basically go do your homework and I want it on my desk tomorrow morning. That's pretty decent. It's like management. Jedi mind tricks. He's like, kind everything. He's, he's like baiting everybody yeah. because they're so easy to, to bait. It's like, he knows he's got, them I all... need to say a certain thing. Yeah. He's, he's, he's playing them all like puppets. Yeah. And then um, he's playing the two in particular, um, Deidre and what's his name? Uh, who's I didn't write down. B name. Um, yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, he's playing them off of each other, but when he turns around and he's he says it in a almost like derogatory way in the way he's delivering it, but then it takes Deidre a second to sort of realize, oh shit, hang on, he's praising me, he's giving me what I want, I'm winning this. Yeah. And she looks surprised by it. everyone looks surprised by it, and yeah, he he's it's good management. He takes a workload off of someone who doesn't want it and gives it to the person who's passionate and wants to work on it. So it's, it's yeah. But he also, the whole, the whole watch your back thing was like, Oh yeah, he knows you're good to go, but listen. Yeah. That, These guys are still gonna, gonna, for you. Exactly. She is. She is she only, only is she the, I was, yeah, was, was going to say, she's the only woman so, in that room. Yeah. Which yeah, again, like so. it's unspoken. It's unsaid. It doesn't need yeah. to be said, but it's that whole thing. It's like, 
it's as you said it's sort of the show is secret woke it's like she's yeah. a woman in a managerial structure and is getting shit on by everyone mm. around her apart from her her uh he heart or whatever his her assistant's name is um right. yeah walking in walking into the archive office Sing and that, that one guy sound asleep like and just sort of reprimanding him a little bit is that was interesting it's sort of she needs that i think occasionally just to sort of be like no i do still have some power over these people <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it's ripped from james's headlines <laughs> not in the slightest um we saw an authority there was an authorian at the party i like that uh oh i didn't even right. notice i saw a big yeah. bug lady and i saw left, left hand side the of the beach party. oh, oh and the, the beach the, the right the right side of the party like i was it adam was just saying last week right we wanted more droids and aliens droids and aliens we got a bunch this week yeah bunch of aliens that's cool um Ask we went back to ferrix we went back to ferrix and we didn't get a creepy kid though disappointed um, oh, I didn't think to look for him. There, I, there so wasn't much going like, on in the background I'm because so it was nighttime. Not looking in the background, I'm yeah, exactly. so not looking in the background of this show. Um, I'm really, really, very, really very with this. brief shots of Cinta. We know that Cinta's got a separate mission. Um, we finally got our our Star Destroyer shot. The Star Destroyer shot was in there. Like we're we we're, we're cleaning up on like trailer shots. I feel like at this point, like I haven't gone back and checked, but. I don't think there's too much that we haven't seen. Um, so but yeah, we got we got some uh Cinta. she's she was always intended to be staying there. That wasn't a mistake. There wasn't a, a rush job to leave her there. It sounds like that was always her plan was to stay there. She's got a a, mm. a cool little piecemeal air scooter. It's not a full speeder that she sat down yeah. on. It's like it is a it is a scooter that she stood up on. Looks like something yeah. out of Rebels. Uh looks like something that um Ezra would have ridden definitely. The uh, 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 the the banker guy was dressed like um, uh, the Macquarie. They just put out Hasbro just put out a Macquarie Obi Wan and Darth Vader two. Oh, pack. cool, nice. And I swear, uh, Adam might be able to back me up on this, but his outfit, the banker's outfit, looked just like the Obi Wan concept art. Wicked, love it, um, love that costume. With the blue with the blue mm -hmm. with the with the thing. Um, uh yeah so yeah um uh stevie's in the dedra she's good she's really good character. The dedra. again mm -hmm. she's a bad guy or what but she's again getting shit on and she's yeah. doing everything she can to get ahead and she's met with a lot of resistance so it's she's nice that best kind of bad guy that bad guy who's like driven and like the competent ones are the best kind because you they're interesting they've you got root. stuff yeah yeah you, you... You root this for them this show's full of potential. Like every yeah. character is full of potential, and you're just waiting. And we know that Andor sort of get comes and gets up to his potential by the time we get to Rogue One. Mm -hmm. But still, at this point, where he's like a dude who's like has the rebellions out of his mind, even though his mom's like, "Hey, it's going to be in your mind." And then later in the episode, we see him just trying to enjoy himself and trying to keep it out of his mind. But no. Mm -hmm. The Empire is always looming, and it's going to be in his mind, especially now when he's in prison with that book. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, dude. It's great. I love it. I can't wait for next it's week. so good. <laughs> um, and I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm no. glad I'm able to sit for sit on it for the next week and um, and just, you know. I'm going to definitely give it at least one more watch. But, yeah. I'm, and it's I'm so it. nice not to binge it because if we binged it, we wouldn't catch like subtleties mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. weird things and have conversations um yeah it's great yeah this show's it's great bad. um i want to thank everybody that joined us in the chat watching the show early and joining us and we've got to thank someone in particular as well for pushing yes. us over over 400 pop that up there um yeah we got over 400 this week uh and four, uh, i'd like now. to thank yeah uh so keep spreading the word just because we got the 400 doesn't mean we oh, done. Oh, five. Um, 500. We want, 500 by next week. We want, we want 420. We'll do a special episode. <laughs> no. Um, no? We, uh, but Ken. Uh, Ken was our 400th uh, from um, Toy Connections. Yeah. Uh, that's Connections spelled with uh, K-E-N-N. Uh, he does a toy show, a toy review show, and other pop culture stuff. I've been on Toy Connections um, as a guest talking about the prequels. 
So nice. go hunt that down. If you're on, uh, go to liveactionstarwars.com on our YouTube page, go down and you'll see uh, a playlist of shows that we've guested on. Yeah. So, yeah, it's all that. Uh, Star Wars so, Music um, Minute, we've both been on, like other things. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, there's a bunch. And then like Screen Geeks and stuff, which yeah. is a show I do with Jay from Toy Geeks and uh, Geek Dad Life. Uh, I need to get on Holdo Maneuver, but. I'm doing double duty. I told Mark, I said, I, I want to get on hold of a maneuver um, because uh, I, I like Mark mm. and I want to support a show. Exactly. But, they asked, they but asked me the to come is- on as well a little while ago. And I'm just like, I would love to when I can. You you know, like my schedule is crazy. Like I've, I've got to run like now. So I, yeah. I, I'd love to as well as soon as I can, as soon as it's like time. We'll, we'll get on there. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to play the banner at the bottom. You all know the socials and yeah. stuff at live action SW and all oh, that. Like, thing. subscribe, share, um, all that shit. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, go check out Hold the Maneuver mm. and Toy Connections. Um, and, 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 and subscribe if you're not. I can't imagine you wouldn't be subscribed. Audio listeners, they're the people that we need to go and subscribe. If you're just an audio <laughs> listener, please just go and give us a click. It, you don't need to watch it. Just listen, carry on listening as you were, but just hit subscribe. It would help us. Thank you very yeah, much. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Until next week, we guys. Uh, we love the show. I could talk about the show for hours longer, uh, but I've unfortunately I've got to go to work. So until next week, uh, don't give in to hate. <laughs> Celebrate the love. <laughs> Punch it.